Quick reminder guys, check the description for a link to our self-made seminar. It's a three-day hands-on training event where we are going to teach you how to make a living making videos at home. Hey guys, I'm Nate, welcome back to The King of Random. Today we're gonna to be trying an experiment that a lot of you have asked to see. We're gonna see what happens if we pour molten aluminum onto dry ice. And the opposite, and see what happens if we drop some dry ice into some molten aluminum. We've got our furnace ready to go and we've got a large block of dry ice, so let's get some aluminum melting and prep our dry ice to see what will happen. This is some of the same aluminum cable that we've used in a previous video. It's a pretty cheap source of fairly high grade aluminum. Now while our furnace is heating up, I said I also want to prep our block of dry ice. And what I'm going to do is take this drill bit and try and drill a sort of core hole out of the center of it. I don't want to pour the aluminum on and have it all just flow right off. I really want it to stay in contact with the dry ice. So hopefully I'll be able to make a small well in our block of dry ice that our liquid aluminum can sit in. Let's give it a shot. I've never tried drilling into dry ice before. Hmm, it's not quick. All right, I think that is a pretty good well that will hold our liquid aluminum nicely, and it's still at least an inch thick below where I've drilled out, so we should have a good insulating layer still. Our drill bit got nice and cold, drilling into our block of dry ice. Looks like our aluminum is just starting to melt inside the crucible now. I think our aluminum is now pretty well molten, and before I take it and pour it into our block of dry ice, I also want to try breaking off a small piece of the dry ice and dropping it down into that aluminum. I'm not sure how much, if at all, it will react. I know that regular ice and molten aluminum can have a sort of explosive effect, and I am a little concerned about that with the dry ice as well, although I don't think we'll have that violent of a reaction. So our small scale test of dropping a small piece of dry ice in will involve me being able to be away, having some containing walls so if it does splash, I'm not in as much danger. And overall, I think it'll just be safer to test it out on that scale first. I've got a small chunk of dry ice. Let's see what happens if I start by just dropping this little piece into our aluminum. All right, dry ice being dropped into molten aluminum. Three, two, one. It's just kind of floating on top of it. Got a few more tiny pieces. I'll drop those in too. I think we are seeing the laden frost effect in full force. Splash. Let's try this with a slightly larger chunk, see if it makes any difference. <laughs> well, I dropped it and it fell in. I dropped it from high enough that it actually fell into the aluminum instead of just sitting on top and it made just sort of one big bubble sitting on the surface of the aluminum. It's not really going anywhere or doing anything, but it looks funny. Now I'm going to poke it. Oh, it just collapsed. It was sort of like an aluminum foil bubble. And when I poked it, it all just disappeared. You can still see it just floating on the surface there. There we go, there's our first test, seeing what happens if we put a small chunk of dry ice into the molten aluminum. Now I think it's time we scale it up and pour a bunch of that molten aluminum down inside our dry ice block. What do you think is gonna happen? And three, two, one. <laughs> That's a cool like, weird bubble on top of the dry ice thing. I like that. We get a lot more motion pouring the aluminum into the dry ice than dropping the dry ice into the aluminum. That is bubbling and spurting and splashing all over. I kind of like that. That looks cool. It's just kind of floating in there now. I think it's formed like a very smooth barrier layer between the two. I'm not going to touch it, but I'm going to put my hand near it to see if I can feel the heat, if there is any heat coming in. Yeah, 
There is plenty of heat coming off of that. Wow, that is toasty in fact. I mean, the dry ice obviously is freezing cold, but right here, there's a lot of warmth coming off of it. Let's see if it will burn this stick at all or anything. Yep, touch the stick to it and it starts smoking pretty quick. It might be hard to see in all the fumes and vapors from the dry ice, but I touch the stick to it and it starts burning still. Still a lot of warmth coming off that though. That's so weird to have my hand this close to dry ice and have it be warming up instead of cooling down. If I put it right here, I can feel how cold it is. If I put it right here though, there's still warmth just coming up off of that aluminum. Whew. There we go. There's our aluminum ingot that we've now cast in dry ice. Still very toasty. It's been sitting in the dry ice for several minutes, but it's still hot enough that it's not safe to touch. You can actually see that it's starting to bury its way into the block of dry ice too. It doesn't like that. Well, we've still got a divot in our dry ice and we've still got more aluminum in the crucible. I say we do it again. Three, two, one. Woo! That's exciting. That was cool. For a second, as I poured it in, it was still glowing orange. Ha! Oh, those are fun bubbles. It kind of reminds me of in Star Wars Episode 7 when Rey makes her little powdered food she like adds the water to it and stirs it with her finger and like that muffin grows out of it it looks kind of like that Bloop. Oh, snap we got our camera just the tiny tiniest bit it's so weird it looks like it's solidified but if I poke it it's still soft the tongs are still able to just stab right down into it it's like a an aluminum paste but just because it's so hot still all right, we've still got a little bit of aluminum left in our crucible. So now, let's just pour what we have left on top of the aluminum that's already in the dry ice. Here goes. Mm, it's not as exciting when it's not in contact with the dry ice on all sides. So now it's resting on a bed of warm aluminum instead of touching the dry ice directly. And it's just not very reactive now. I'm gonna pop the bubble now. It wasn't really popping, it was more of just crushing it. <laughs> it's sort of puddled out as it went down into the dry ice. So now our ingot is just stuck in the block of dry ice. Oh. We've actually managed to go all the way through. There it is. Ha! So here is our ingot of aluminum that we poured on top of more aluminum. Nice curved round edges to that. And then our dry ice brick, which we've just melted a hole right through with our aluminum. There we have it, a little bit of dry ice dropped into molten aluminum, which wasn't very reactive, but the molten aluminum poured into the dry ice, I thought it looked really cool. We had a nice little well that I drilled into the dry ice block, and that did a really good job of containing the molten aluminum. I think all of that cold fighting with all of that heat was pretty fun. We had a lot of really good bubbling action. It seemed like the aluminum would bubble up and then maybe it would just get too hot and collapse back down or it would get too thin walled and just break. But we had a lot of rising and falling of the bubbles in the aluminum, which looked really cool. And we managed to melt a hole all the way through our block of dry ice. We've got a couple of aluminum ingots that we managed to pour into the dry ice block. Overall, this was pretty fun. I didn't know what to expect. I've never poured liquid metal into a block of dry ice before, but it turned out pretty well. And it splashed and splattered a little bit, but it wasn't an explosive, super dangerous amount of reaction. For the most part, it just spurted a little bit. And I was wearing thick leather gloves. I had my glasses on, I had long sleeves on, and I was able to back away as soon as I poured it in. So I felt pretty safe the whole time, even though a little tiny splash of aluminum did jump up and stick to the front of one of our cameras. 
This was a really fun idea and we tried it because there were a ton of different people who requested it down in the comments. So if you've got a cool experiment you want to see us do, let us know down in the comments and we might just film it. Thanks for joining us for this video today and remember to come gear yourself up with products and merch at thekingofrandom.com. See you there. Kind of stuck. Somehow we have managed to fuse aluminum to a steel pan. I don't think that's coming out. Quick reminder, there is a link down in the description to sign up for our self-made training event. If you've been wanting to build a career from making videos at home, doing the things that you love, this is how you get started. 